So we have the deformers on our character that is allowing us to position the character in different poses. However, that's not the same thing as a rig. So as we've mentioned before, a rig is how the animator can interact with the deformers in the model in order to get a performance or acting or animation out of that character. So for example, if I were to grab the root control right now and try to make the character squat, the feet are going to go to the floor. To manage to make the character squat, I would have to rotate both of these and then rotate both of these. And like, it's just gonna take a lot of extra work just to make our feet appear to stay on the floor. That's not very easy to animate. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put some IK on these legs. So if we go to skeleton, create IK handle, and go to our options box, make sure that sticky is checked on and make sure that we're using rotation plane solver. And then I'll click on the hip first and then the ankle. So that gives us an IK. And if I were to grab my character's hip now and move it, you'll see that the foot kind of stays on the floor. So I'm gonna do the same thing again on the other side. Go to skeleton, create IK handle. Click the hip, click the ankle, and so now we have this. So that's working pretty well. So now we need some sort of method to interact with these controls. We don't want to have to manually be animating on the joints themselves. So I'm going to hide that so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to go ahead and create a NURBS curve in order to create a controller for our rig. I would like to be able to animate on the fewest number of objects possible and still be able to get a good animation out of this. So if I click the NURBS circle, we get a circle here in the center. I'm going to go ahead and hide the mesh. And then while holding down V, I'm going to move this and you'll see that it starts to snap to each of the joints. I want to snap to my root joint. And then I can scale that up. And now when I look at our model, now I have a controller that is in the same location as our joint. However, it's got some kind of nasty channels in here, right? We got a lot of numbers in here that are just hanging around. And so I wanna clear those out. I'm going to go edit, delete by type, history, and then modify freeze transformations. And that zeroes everything out. I'll name this root and then CTRL for control. Now, the feet are gonna be a little more complicated, so we'll save those for the next video. Right now, what I want to do is I wanna be able to move this control and have it drive that joint. I could parent the entire root underneath this control, but if I did that, I, I would have to break the chains in order to parent other things to other things later. So instead of using parenting, I'm going to use a new type of thing called a constraint. So if I select the control and I go to root and I go to constrain parent, what's going to happen is when I grab this control and move it now, it's going to drive our character's root control. Now let's talk about constraints just a little bit. I'm going to open up our other version of Maya here. So if I have three objects here, the first one is a box, or all of these are a box. Um, so if I have you know, P cube one, and I want P cube one to manipulate this box or, or control this box in some way, we, we saw earlier that I can parent them, right? Um, but sometimes we need to maintain this hierarchy. So what I'm gonna do is if I grab P cube one and go to my constraints, you'll see that I have multiple types of constraints. Parent is going to work the same as parenting an object underneath another object. And you'll see that if I select P cube one, P cube two, and hit parent, 
pcube2 now has all of the translates and rotates blue, like they've, they've changed colors. You'll also notice that pcube2 has a constraint underneath it. And now if I moved pcube1, pcube2 goes with it, and if I rotate it, it goes with it. However, because these channels are being controlled by the constraint, I can't animate this anymore. I can't set keyframes on this because then I would be giving it two different instructions. I'll be telling it that the constraint should control translates and rotates and my keyframe should be controlling translates and rotates. So there's some tricks around that, but let's not worry about that just now. If I want to get rid of the constraint, I just select this constraint and hit delete. Now I can have um, some other kinds of constraints here as well. There's a point constraint and an orient constraint. If I select these boxes and I just do point constraint, watch what happens. So it appears PQ2 disappeared. It didn't. It just moved it to the same location as PQ1. So now they're right on top of each other. And if I were to move PQ1, PQ2 goes with it. Now if I select PQ2, you'll see the translates are being driven by P cube one. So whatever is on P cube one, P cube two will get those in the translates. But if I rotate P cube one, P cube two does not rotate because the rotation channels are still being controlled by something else or by nothing else actually. It's being controlled by um, any of the information that I give it. So, that's the difference between point and parent constraint. Now, something I will show you, and undo until that goes back, I can still do a point constraint, and in the options box, choose maintain offset. And now if I hit add, it doesn't move the box, but the translates are still being controlled by this box. All right, so I can move it, but when I rotate it, it doesn't affect the rotation of the other box. So undo, so let's do it one more time, but this time let's do an orient constraint. And when I hit orient constraint, you'll see that P cube two's rotates are now being controlled by something. And it's P cube one's rotates. When I rotate it, P cube two rotates with it. However, when I move it, nothing happens. So there's a lot of different ways of thinking about this. Now the reason I have three of these is because we can have more than one constraint on an object at a time. If I do this and hit parent, now p cube one is controlling p cube two. However, if I do p cube three and p cube two and do parent as well, now they're both controlling it somewhat. So there's some interesting stuff with this that allows us to do um, a lot of um, a lot of constraining and and controlling of other objects without actually having to mess up the hierarchy. So back to our character, we have this parent constraint, and it is driving both the translates and the rotates of our root control. And that's how that works. Um, so for the feet, it's a little bit more complicated. And um, I'm just going to go ahead and pick that up in the next video.